Uh, you know, I didn't get to put my little notes back in order from earlier, so. But I would like to start out by saying that the mission that was just discussed and talked about is due in part, in large part, to your discipleship. So I would like New Leaf to give themselves a round of applause for their discipleship and their mission. And yes, I won't sit still for this one. I didn't sit still earlier. Poor cameraman is going to go nuts, but I actually have a little bit longer this time than this morning. I stand here this morning with a heavy heart. Three years ago, I came to this church and was encouraged and uplifted and upheld in the beginning of my ministry journey. This church, you, have all been there to support me through general conferences, annual conferences, and your votes and your support to further myself in ministry. And I thank you for that. And I've thoroughly enjoyed this last year being with you and working alongside you. In fact, when the bishop last year said that they were appointing me here, I was like, home church? That doesn't normally happen. But it was an honor and a privilege to be here for this past year to work with you and to take part in your faith journeys, as well as it's been an honor to work with Pastor Jan and Pastor Scott. I hope that I have been an impact in your journey as much as you've impacted my journey. So thank you. And when we think about mission, and discipleship. Now, I know I stood here a year ago to this day and talked about discipleship. In fact, I remember preaching on what is a disciple. Does anybody remember that? It was a really long one. In fact, I think it said 26 minutes on the, uh, what? Really, I think it was. It was long. But I followed up John Saronis' radical discipleship and I just had to set some things straight. <laughs> but discipleship, I was appointed for the last year for small groups and discipleship pathways. I have watched discipleship grow. I have watched faith grow. I've watched your journeys expand. I've watched you become more like Christ which is what discipleship is about. And it's been an honor to be there and take that walk with you. But when we think about discipleship and mission, we always, always want what's best in our lives, don't we? We always want to come out on top. We, we want to be more than just average, don't we? The accountants want to be the best accountants. Most people, they want to become millionaires. I know it all sits in the back of our mind, doesn't it? I want to win the lottery, right? But the reality of it is we want to be more than just average. It's in our human nature. We want our lives to be full and prosperous, don't we? But the question I ask is, are they already full and prosperous? What are they full and prosperous of? Paul shares these words with the believers in the church at Ephesus, and he says to us this day, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among our, yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I think that's a pretty straightforward reading. Paul is telling us that we have a mission. He's given us a mission. Actually, Christ gave us the mission. It was laid out for us, wasn't it? We could call this mission 24-7. We are to be disciples of Christ. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We're to be reflections of Jesus. We are to shine that light of Christ, the light of the gospel to others. Throughout history, God's shown himself in and through relationship, hasn't he? Relationship with his people. And I think Chris said it best, to love God and to love one another. Our mission is God's people. Discipleship. We go back to what I talked about when I first came here. But we think about this in depth as we've grown in discipleship. God came to us as more than words. He came to us in the flesh as Jesus himself. And he gave his disciples and us today power and a vision, didn't he? In a way, the picture that was given to us is how to live a glorious life. But the question is, what's a glorious life? I mean, Jesus could have simply just given the disciples all his power from on high many, many years ago. But he didn't. He spent three years doing what? Discipling, teaching. Jesus' actions were the example, weren't they? The example of how to live a life. They were the model for us, just as they were for those early disciples. But it's very sad and painful for me to think about it in the context of today's society. How many people today have rejected the church in the world today? because of the actions of those who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, those who claim to be disciples. Much of the world isn't interested in Christianity, is it? In fact, most of it rejects Christianity. And why is that? Because too many people, far too many people that call themselves disciples or Christians are known to be people who don't live what they say. And let's face it, we all do it, don't we? We all do. We all come in here and we learn, we preach, we worship, and yet the first thing we do is walk out the door and cuss at the guy who cuts us off, don't we? But the reality of it is, we're not living what we preach. So our discipleship at that point comes into question. Are we being true disciples? To disciple means to help grow the church as well as growing ourselves. Which means we need to live what we teach and preach. We need to carry it out. We need to move beyond a superficial faith. Because with a, super faith, with a superficial faith, we will not experience supernatural living, will we? We won't experience the life we're meant to live or be the people that God meant for us to be. Now, I could go all over Scripture with that one to be the people that God meant us to be. But what picture does Jesus give us as we look at his life and we listen to his words? Jesus loved the unlovable, forgave the unforgivable, touched the untouchable. Across the street from the Alfred Murrow Federal Building in Oklahoma that was bombed many years ago, 168 people died there that day, many children. There stands a memorial. And at the heart of that memorial is a nine-foot statue of Jesus. 
a statue with Jesus with his face in his hands, slightly turned away from where the act of terror took place. And the plaque simply reads, and Jesus wept. It makes the hair on my arm stand up. There have been no greater three words ever spoken in Scripture than Jesus wept. How do we picture Jesus in our lives? How do we picture in our hearts all that Jesus has done for us? Does Jesus weep? Can we even begin to comprehend his love for us? Discipleship. We need to live what we preach, behave like it, act like it, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Are we followers, believers, and disciples of Jesus Christ, or are we fans? Fans sit on the sideline and watch, don't they? Followers, disciples, get in the field and play. Make no mistake, it's messy to play. Sometimes it's hurtful and painful to play. But followers and disciples and believers will get on the field and play. We will be in the middle of the action. We must be men and women of action. We must seize every opportunity each day to be disciples and to disciple others. To share Christ's light, the gospel. We're called to be people of action. A man once told his wife that he never wanted to be in a vegetative state and hooked up to a machine. And I'm sure many of us here feel that way many times, don't we? Don't want it to happen. He told his wife that whatever happens, no matter what happens, I want you to pull the plug. Okay. She got up, walked across the room, and unplugged the TV. We are meant to be a people of action. Not idly sit by and watch as fans. Are we experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit? Spirit? Are we experiencing that power every minute of every day? We are. Why are we not sharing it? Why are we not using it? It takes me back to when I first came. Discipleship. What is a disciple? Well, now that we've spent a year learning and growing and becoming disciples, it's time to put it into action. As I said in my pastor's pen, we need to go forth. We need to continue the journey. We need to evaluate our lives, evaluate our relationships, our actions, and our reactions, and our priorities in light of our relationship to Jesus Christ. All the busyness that goes on in our lives gets in the way, doesn't it? I have this, we have that. Commitments, timelines, agendas. It all gets in the way. And I ask, for all that busyness in our lives, are we getting anywhere? Are we going anywhere? Or are we just sitting, spinning our wheels, hoping to get somewhere? Is there a purpose for all of it? My purpose, as well as yours, falls in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gives meaning to each and every one of our lives. And that gives me the ability to say that I know why I'm doing what I'm doing, where I'm going, and why I'm doing it. It's an awesome feeling, isn't it? The question needs to be asked is, are we just living or are we existing? 
you have to decide for yourself if you're living or existing because there is a great difference. And if we're just existing, we have to admit with each other that we are empty inside, aren't we? We're not filled completely. However, we can live our lives full of vigor and livelihood. We can learn from our shortfalls and failures. And Lord knows over the last year, I've had to learn from quite a few. Just ask Pastor Jan and Pastor Scott or Jeff. Um, We're full of shortfalls. But we learn from them. But as disciples, I'd like to leave you with this, New Leaf. Live in love and love to live. Live in God's love. Experience God's love. Share God's love and make the most out of this one life that he's given each and every one of us by being better disciples of Jesus Christ. And it's time to stop telling God how big our problems are, but tell our problems how big our God is. We can learn and we must learn to just live and not exist. Because just existing is not living. Amen.